All right, guys, welcome back. So here's the, the rotor core, if you will. So RD3DP, I, I printed out the ones you told me to, um, but they don't fit the rod. And you probably did that by design to give it some clearance. But I like it to be a little tighter. So instead of messing around, I had already printed out my own. And there's a hole there for the set screw, one on that side, one on that side. And I'm actually going to grind a flat there and there. But I wanted to address something bigger. This plastic is extremely tough. I cannot break it, even with all my strength. I believe that with this plastic and this plastic on here, the, these magnets are not going to come flying out. I truly believe that because although I'm for safety, I'm also for aesthetics. And I don't like putting tape. I used to put tape on everything and I can't stand it. I'm probably, even after I said that, probably still going to wrap uh, uh, two strips, one around here and one around here. Because the magnets certainly aren't going to come flying out this way because the rotor spins like this. Um, so I will use tape, but I really hate it. I, I, I started out saying I'm not going to use tape. Then I just, since we, I am convinced that this plastic will not tear. The way I print these covers is different than your average print. It's the same way I print these coil, these coil housings so that they don't flex. Um, I've been experimenting around in this plastic. It's extremely tough. It's not going to break. Um, but again, having said that, I'm probably going to put tape, even though I hate putting tape on stuff. Anyway, that's not really what I wanted to say. So I have the homemade... I guess you call it roto brakes. I'm not sure why it's called a roto brake. I call it, I don't really call it anything. I just call it the piece. I really like this design, but I wish you made the hole the same size as the hole that was in the rotor. I understand why you did it. I totally get it. Um, so that you don't have any issues with fit when pushing the rod through into the housing. But I I went and did my own and I really don't have any problems with it. It's nice and tight. I like it like that. And like I said, I'm going to grind. This is 304 stainless, so it's non-magnetic. These little guys are magnetic, unfortunately. I may tr trade them out for some brass um, brass screws. But yeah, I've got two of these rods. So if I screw it up really bad, I can, um, use a second one, but yeah, I'm going to grind a little flat there and a little flat there. And I think you design these to take a basic set screw, which I made the same whole size for my covers or caps or whatever you call them. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm going to put tape on it. I do have the tape. Where is it? I've, I've got some here somewhere. Here it is. This is really good tape, this nylon tape. I'm going to put one there. Or I might just put one right down the middle. I mean, it's not going to come flying out. Uh, I'll probably put two. I'll put one there and one there all the way around. I hate doing it, but I'm going to do it just for, I don't see any reason to put it around this way like this. I really don't think these magnets are going to come flying out laterally. Not only are they really tight inside the rotor housing, thanks to a beautiful design system. Uh, they're held in magnetically, and they're also held in with this 
Uh, I think it's three millimeter thick PLA wall. I think it's a, uh, maybe it's two. I think I made this, these three. This was one that was a solid and I cut it out and I don't like the way it came out. So I just printed a second one. Now it looks nicer. Yeah, so I will put a strip around that way and one around this way. And let's get going. Stay tuned. Oh, and I just realized that these are stainless steel. They're not 304, but they're very, they're only mildly magnetic. I mean, really mild. Got the flats in there, and I'm doing it on opposite sides because I'm choosing to use my homemade uh, cap that just has one um, set screw hole versus the one you made, my friend, which is a far superior one, but... I like mine because it's tight. And I have trouble importing other people's stuff into Fusion 360. I can do it, but it's a real pain in the butt. Um, if I had the STL files, or not the STL files, the, um, the mesh files, it'd be different. But you have to import it as a mesh, then you got to convert it. And then I, I don't seem to have much luck editing other people's things after they've been uh, turned into an STL file. I don't know what the file extension is for a basic Fusion 360 file. I forgot what it was. Anyway, if I had one of those, it'd be different. Um, but I don't. So I'm going to go with one of, one, one of mine. Because again, like I said, I like the hole to be tighter around the rod. Anyway. I just tapped the set screw hole with one of these. And now I'm going to see if I can find some set screws and see if they'll work. If not, I'll just cut one of these down, one of these down to size, cut off about 10 millimeters. All right, stay tuned. You know, I was thinking I have plenty of these collets. And it's a perfect size. It's highly magnetic, but I'm not worried about that. But I was thinking about redesigning this, actually. Ah, a little too big, yeah. Redesigning this to have an, an opening, but doesn't go all the way through. Only goes down about five millimeters, because I think, or four millimeters. I think these are like five millimeters thick. And have it a press fit. Or. What I could do. No, I don't want to do that. Now, I'll stick with this. It's a good design. It's a really good design. I can't believe I chose the wrong. The wrong file print out but once I realized that the whole patterns on this one didn't fit you steered me in the right direction um, it's a really good design but uh, again I, I, I like mine but I was thinking there's got to be a way I can implement one of these because these fit on here perfectly and they would line up just right but there's no way to attach this to the rotor without doing all kinds of craziness. So I think I'll just stick with the simple design. It turns out that the set screws I have are too big for this. I don't want to re-drill it. Even though this was 100% infill and it's really strong, I don't like re-drilling PLA. It makes it weak. So what I'll do is I will just cut one of these guys down and use one of these. Cut it down. I'll have to measure it out. Yeah, no problem. Stay tuned. Yeah, so it works good. It's in there nice and tight. That should hold it. That should hold it. Yeah, so let me get the other one and do that and put it together. And then I have to start assembling this thing. And I think the way you assemble it 
is from the inside out. Put this together and then put the bearings on there. Drop the bearings in there in the bearing grooves here, which I'm going to assume are a perfect fit. Everything else on this rotor is a perfect fit. You did a really nice job, man. Anyway, um, put that in there, put that together, screw it in, tighten it, you know, lock it together, and then start building. Oh, what I need to do first is I need to set up my coils here. I need to put, I got the connectors that I want to use, and I'm going to put one here. You can't see that. I'm going to put one on the inside here and one on the inside here. All right, stay tuned. All right, so I ended up reprinting these to be a little bit beefier and bigger. And I'm glad I did that. I got the other one printing now. And there's the coils. I've never done it like this before, so I don't know what's going to happen. But the red is the finish and the black is the start. Finish is always positive, at least in my rule book. Um, and it always works that way. So if I wanted to connect these two, I would run a jumper wire from here to here to um, run it as a standard Newman motor. But this way I can, I can run it. I can run separate circuits on each one of these in my dual circuit setup, my dual JL94 circuit setup. Anyway, that's just one of my setups. I'm going to I'm going to try to run this thing exactly the way it was intended, but first I'm going to experiment around. I'm waiting for my second one here to print and then we're good to go. Stay tuned. Well, the good news as I suspected, the bearings fit in the housing beautifully. Bad news is is I have to remake my end caps. That's what I'm calling them, mag end caps, because, yeah, <clears throat> as you can see, they are pressing the, the, um, the nut is pressing or the screw is pressing up against the washer. And it's, it's funny because when I made this last one, when I made these, I made countersink holes for the, the, um, the Allen nuts, but I didn't make them big enough. So I just have to go into fusion and just widen it a little bit. I should have measured it. I didn't measure it, but it's going to work really good. And yes, I still got to put tape around here. I'm not going to forget that. But yeah, dag nabbit. And I made these thicker too. Thinking that there was going to be a ton of room in here. But I didn't, I didn't check it. And there's not. There's just enough room for these, but not the um not the nuts which is not it's not the end of the world it's not a big deal God, does these magnets are freaking strong i've got to be so careful anyway let me go reprint and i'll be back stay tuned yeah i now understand why you made these the way you made these they're about the right size or i have about the right size but you made the step down so that the nut wouldn't be in the way. Yep. That's what I get for playing with perfection. Anyway, it's not a big deal. I could still use these. But I think I'm going to stick with this simply because I'm stubborn. And what is that right there? Anyway. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with these. Um, if it turns out, I mean, I'm, I'm reprinting them now. And I, these hex heads are about 5.4 in diameter. 
5.4 millimeters, so I'm making mine 5.6, just for a little extra space. And they're about, they're about two point, they're about three millimeters high. So I made that, so they'll sit right in here like, oops. They will sit inside like that. And they'll be out of the way. If it turns out that it's still kind of janky, then I'll I'll use these. Even though I don't like the fact that it it's not tight here. But that's not a big deal. That's just a design choice. <clears throat> and again, I understand why you did it. All right, stay tuned. All right, so I put I redid these. As you can see, they don't stick out now. But I probably should refrain from adding stuff to this thing because my my um my covers there interfere with the housing, which is typical, right? I, I add stuff and I and I mess it up, but yeah. So I've got to take these off and definitely now put tape in there and then put this back. This guy goes like this. This goes like this. And there we go. Yeah, I'll definitely have to put tape on there. I didn't think, I thought I had plenty of room. I didn't think it was that. I probably should have chamfered the edges here. But if I made it any thinner, it would be ineffective. But now it's looking good. So let me get tape on that thing before I go any further. Because again, I got to build this from the inside out. Then I got to screw this together. <clears throat> And we shall see what we shall see. I'm still convinced these aren't going to come flying out. But rather safe than sorry, right? All right, stay tuned. That actually doesn't look too bad. Yeah, so this is fiberglass reinforced tape. So that should be good. I really don't think I need to put a piece this way and that way because... This is blocking it. The magnet cap, what I'm, I'm calling end caps, that's blocking it. Yeah, that's not too bad. I put two layers on there. Yeah, I'm not fond of the tape, but rather safe than sorry. I think it'll be all right. All right. Stay tuned. All right. There we go. Nice. Bearings are really good. Nothing's rubbing. I have a couple of spacers in there. They're kind of temporary spacers. They're washers. I don't know that I really want to put washers in there, but it works really good. And I've got two of those the same threaded screws that I use for here, the same hex nuts. Massage that tape in there. Oh, I gotta cut that off. See, this is why I don't like this tape. It shreds sometimes, but it's good tape. There's no way this is gonna come out. All right, now I gotta put the rest of it together. Stay tuned. All right, that's the first look at the inside. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be awesome. All right, and then this guy goes on like this. Something like that. And then these go out here like so. Or how do they go on? Oh, no, they go on here. I'm sorry. And they screw into... They screw into the center piece. 
and I have good screws for those, or I have self-tapping screws, brass. And I can get to the wires pretty easily. Not as easy as I like. I should have pointed those out more. Stay tuned. Sorry about that. My wife wanted to know if I fed the dog. So, yeah, I can still get to it. It's like I said, it's not as easy as I would like it. But what I'm going to do is on the outside here, I'm going to put two more of these. Probably one right here and one right here, one right here and one right here or one right here, one right here, something like that where I can just hook a wire to it and then hook the wire to that. I, I don't know, something like that. Because I want to test this thing out on the JL94 circuit really quick. All right, stay tuned. So I've got this really soft, malleable wire that I like using, but I have to make my own connectors on it. And that's where these things come in. I love these things. Basically, you just get your wire ready twist it like that go in here grab one of these slide it on here like that make sure that it goes all the way down into the and then you just go like this and like that and voila you have a good connection on each end and then let me show you over here. You just go like this. You press this. Push this guy in here. Oops. Get in there. And it's locked in there. And then hopefully I can just feed these through here. Well, you really can't see because I can't do the stupid camera and the thing at the same time. Anyway, they'll feed through these openings here. Yeah, so I'm going to do it like that. That's just so I can, and then if I want to, I can run this positive to this negative over here. And because they're so flexible, it's not going to be an issue. Stay tuned. I do have a bunch of these pre-made ones. The wire's not as flexible, and these things tend to break i also have the ability to make these i have the kit that actually makes these they're a little trickier um, but these guys work really great all right stay tuned I had to stop and go get a burrito anyway <laughs> so here's the um here's what it's going to look like let me turn the light on so yeah so i can either Pop a hole in the side here. I'm deciding on whether I want to mar up the system. But I could put like a dime size hole there. One here. One over here. And one over here. Or... Why is that... Oh, I see why. There we go. Oops, sorry, guys. Yeah, so I can put a whole one here, one here, one on the other side there. If I want to do that. But now I've got to screw everything together, which I don't really have the right side. I mean, I do. I have screws that'll work. But I don't. Yeah, I could put four here, four here, four on the other side. They're flathead little brass screws. They should work okay. I'm not thrilled about them, but they're they're wood. They're kind of like wood screws or self-cutting screws, so they should work pretty good with the PLA. I did make this or this center piece pretty stout 
Let's see what happens, because I want to definitely try this thing on the JL94 circuit. Stay tuned. Yeah, those screws work pretty good. Nice and flat. It should work. Let me get the rest of it screwed down, and we'll take a look at it, see how it is. Stay tuned. Yeah, so this wiring situation worked out pretty good because it's so flexible. I can just toss it inside there when I'm not using it. And, yeah. So let's see. So I've got the screws all in. I only put two in on each side here because I'm not 100% sure I want to continue to do that. But I definitely want to get this puppy going. I want to see how it's going to perform on the dual JL94 circuit. So let's get it hooked up. I'm going to start out real slow. Let me make sure that my power supply is down to like 30 volts because I want to start out real slow. All right, stay tuned. All right, nice and slow, starting at low voltage, six volts. There's eight volts, starting to get some output now. There's 12 volts. So this is not set up to work like a J on the JL94 dual circuit. Let's crank it up. Let's really crank it up. 22 volts. Hmm. I mean, it works great, but I'm surprised. I thought, I guess because of the thickness of the coil and the heaviness of the rotor, it's meant to do more as a Newman motor type setup, which is cool. I've got all that set up for that as well. Let me... Make sure everything is staying cool, and it is some good output. <clears throat> it has a little bit of that knocking sound. Not really knocking sound. I guess that's... Oh, it's got really good torque. So when I pull on it, the amps go up. Got good torque. It's a really nice motor. So the camera doesn't do it justice. As you guys are probably aware, the camera makes it look like it's barely moving, but she's flying. I'll have to figure out how to adjust my focus on my camera or the settings on my phone here so that it would take more realistic. Let's see what we got here. Oops. Something something happened. Oh, did it just jump? Maybe it just jumped. Oh, yeah, it just jumped. Something jumped or I'm not really sure what happened. I got scared of me. I thought, oh my god, my worst nightmare. The Magnus came flying out. But they didn't, of course. And I didn't think it was gonna... And again, the freaking video does not do it justice. It's flying. Alright, let me turn it down. Let me turn it down to... Let me turn it off. Because something happened. Something jumped. Oh, the resistors are pretty hot on that. Yeah, I thought something happened. I mean, everything's all right. All right, I got to take it apart and see how it looks. 
but for a first run, it, it worked really nice. Let me do it again. <clears throat> Damn, I barely touched it and it started flying. Got plenty of clearance in there. Yeah, the resistors are getting hot. Let me get my thing and let's see how hot they're getting. Yeah, 82 degrees or 83 degrees, 78, 81 degrees. That's not that bad. Oh, but the diode's up there at 102. Yeah, I better, let me see how that diode is. That diode's fine. 102. Let me shut her down. All right. For a first run, that thing did great. I love this motor. I can't wait to set it up. I'm going to stand it up like... I'm going to stand it up on its face, though, when I do the Newman motor setup. Something's wobbling there. I think that's just the play and the bearing. Because everything stayed together. Oh, I wonder if I grabbed the wrong rod. No, it's all right. Yeah, so RD3DP, beautiful job. Great motor. I can't wait to set it up properly. I just wanted to get it running, running. I wanted to see what it looked like using it for... It's wicked. She starts up really quick. That's crazy. I just barely... It's almost like I'm throwing a switch. Look at those beautiful coils. Oh. I'm going to use these coils outside of this too. I got to try them on one of my other motors because those coils are beautiful. All right. Let's turn it off. Give this thing a chance to cool down. I have another JL94 dual circuit. I think I'm going to hook it up and see. One that I've not even tried yet. Stay tuned. I was curious about some other circuits. So this is your basic Bedini circuit. And it, it works all right. Let's really jack it up. This is a nice Bedini circuit. I can turn the output on and off if I want to. Huh. Yeah, I, I was sorry about that. I was spacing out on the, the potentiometer. When I turn it down, the amps go up, or the milliamps. When I open it all the way up, it's at like 70 milliamps. Let's crank it up. Yeah, she's working nice. Let's see how the heater is on this one. That one's all right. Yeah, everything's staying cool on this one. Anyway, Bedini circuit works great. Let's try a different circuit. Stay tuned. There's another dual JL94 circuit. Looking good. Looking good. Really good output. I think the other, the other circuit was just getting too hot. Let me see how this guy's doing. Ooh, he's getting up there in temperature. Let me turn it down. Ah. 
All right, so what I need to do now is set it up like a regular Newman motor. I'm going to turn it on its side. I'm going to use my version of a brush. What I'm, what I'm definitely going to do is pop a couple of holes in the lid here or just shorten these and attach them to some external connectors so that I can connect stuff quickly or not. To the yeah something like that but I'm probably gonna take this guy apart first make sure everything's okay uh, so yeah great motor not I've not yet run it the way I sh the way it was meant to be run but that's coming up on the next video thanks for watching.